Well, hello, this is Miss Heard with Miss Heard Song Lyrics Podcast. We're in season four, episode 163, and doing our first ever Culture Club Miss Heard Song Lyric from their song, Karma Chameleon. The Miss Heard Song Lyric is, Desert loving in your eyes all the way. And the correct lyrics is, There's a loving in your eyes all the way. I don't know about you, but when I see dessert, it's and it's in front of my eyes, I'm loving it all the way. So, I mean, it makes sense. So, this actually came from one of our listeners, Glenda, in the UK. So, shout out to Glenda. Thank you. She actually put a comment on our Facebook site for Miss Heard Song Lyrics and asking about, is it desert loving or is it loving in your eyes? And so, I want to say thanks, Glenda, for the shout out because it is actually truly, there's a loving in your eyes. Okay, so let's start about the song, Karma Chameleon. It was a song by an English band called Culture Club featured in their 1983 album called Color by Numbers. And of course, it's spelled in the English sense of C-O-L-O-U-R uh, instead of the American or um, at least what I'm used to here, the color spelling of C-O-L-O-R. The single re was released in the UK in September of 1983 and became the second Culture Club single to reach the top of the UK singles chart after the song, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? Remember that song? This record actually stayed at number one for six weeks and became the UK's biggest si selling single of the year in 1983, selling about 955,000 copies. Whoa. According to official charts, company sales data confirmed in March of 2021 for the Channel 5 show Britain's Favorite 80 Songs. So just recently, about a year ago, I mean, it was already hitting, I probably, if it's not close to a million or hitting a million, it should be close to that. To date, it's the 38th biggest sing selling single of all time in the UK, selling over 1.52 million copies. That's amazing. Uh, the song also spent three weeks at number one on the US Billboard Hot 100 in early 1984, becoming Culture Club's biggest hit and only US number one single among their many top 10 hits. That I'm, I was surprised to read and hear about that because I assumed other songs other than this song, like Do You Really Want to Hurt Me?, Church of the Poison Mind. I thought they hit number one, but this is the only one. So there you go. So who's Culture Club, if you're not familiar? Well, they're an English pop band formed in London back in 1981 and includes Boy George in lead vocals, Roy Hay, guitar and keyboards, Mikey Craig, bass guitar, and they say now formerly uh, part of the band, no longer, John Moss, who did drums and percussion. And they came about when it was called what they call the New Romantic Scene, and they're considered one of the most representative and influential, influential groups of the 1980s. So it was led by singer frontman Boy George, who's at that time, or till now too, androgynous style of dressing that now we know gender fluid, caught the attention of the public. I remember seeing him and I was like, wait a minute, he looks like a woman. The voice is beautiful. Man, name is Boy, so confused. Is he a boy? Is he a girl? So, I mean, my, my young self was even confused at that time. And of course, uh, they took the the world by storm in the early 80s and as a band they sell, sold more than 50 million records including over 6 million BPI certified records sold in the UK and over 7 million RIAA certified records sold in the US. Remember that's during that time where you couldn't download anything you had to literally jump in a car, ride your bike, walk to a record store and actually buy the single or the album. So here are the other hits which again I'm surprised that only this song Karma Chameleon was the only one that hit number one. Their hits include Do You Really Want to Hurt Me, Time, Clock with a Heart, I'll Tumble for Ya, Church of the Poison Mind, Karma Chameleon, which we're talking about today, Victims, Miss Me Blind, You're Gonna Miss Me, You're Gonna Miss Me Blind, It's a Miracle, The War Song, Move Away and I Want to Be Loved. In the UK, they amassed about 12 top 40 hit singles between 1982 and 99. And of course, including the number one song, Do You Really Want to Hurt Me? And then Karma Chameleon came along and became the biggest selling single of 1983 in the UK and hit number one, like I said earlier, on the US Hot 100 in 1984. And the song Time, Clock of the Heart is included on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's list of 500 songs that shaped rock and roll. Did not know that. Their second album, Color by Numbers, again, sold no, more than 10 million copies worldwide and appeared on Rolling Stone's magazine list of the 100 best albums of the 1980s and is also included in the book 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. <laughs> okay, 10 of their singles reached the US Top 40 where they were associated with the second British invasion 
of British new wave groups that became popular in the U.S. during the cable music channel named MTV. Hello, that's when they used to play music videos. And then Culture Club's music combined British new wave. There was an American soul and pop to it. Also had some elements of Jamaican reggae and other styles such as Calypso, Salsa, and with Karma Chameleon elements of country music. Who knew? It all worked out, right? <laughs> all right. In 1984, Culture Club won Brit Awards for British, Best British Group, Best British Single for Karma Chameleon, and the Grammy Award for Best New Artist. They were also nominated the same year for the Grammy Award for Pop Vocal by Duo or Group. The man was also nominated for a Canadian Juno Award for International Album of the Year. All right, All right it's, got a, it's got a cold here, so I'm working through it. In 1985, back in January, Culture Club was nominated for an American Music Award for Favorite Pop Rock Band Duo Group Video Artist. And in September 1985, they were also nominated for two MTV Video Music Awards for Best Special Effects and Best Art Direction for the video It's a Miracle. Then in 1987, they received another nomination for an American Music Award for Favorite Pop Rock Band Duo Group Video Artist. And then just to talk about, like I mentioned earlier about Boy Jordan, that this new romantic era. So in 1981, he was also considered what they call a Blitz Club regular. I'm like, what does that mean? So I did more searching. The Blitz Club, aka a, where, a club where these Blitz kids were a group of people, including Boy George, who frequented the Tuesday club night at Blitz in Covert or Convent Garden, London, back in the 79, 80 era and are credited with launching the New Romantic subculture movement. So like, what is the New Romantic movement? It's an underground underground subculture that originated in the UK, in this place, in the late 70s, and emerged from the nightclub scene, like I said earlier, from this nightclub, and also such as venues called Billy's and the Blitz. The New Romantic movement was characterized by flamboyant, eccentric fashion inspired by fashion boutiques, uh, such as Con and Bell in Birmingham and PX in London, and early uh, folks that were, you know, part of this were either referred, referred to by the press by such names as Blitz Kids or New Dandies or Romantic Rebels. I love it. That could also be a name of great, great groups, right? Influenced by David Boy, Mark Bolin, and Roxy Music, the New Romantics developed fashions inspired by glam rock, also coupled with early romantic period of the late 18th and 19th century, which is where the movement took its place. A lot of ruffled shirts, white pirate shirts, and though it was a fashion movement, several British music acts in the late 1970s and early 80s adopted the style and became known to epitomize it within the press, including Steve Strange and Visage, Duran Duran, Spandau Ballet, A Flock of Seagulls, and Boy George of Culture Club, as well as Adam and the Ants. Totally can see Adam and the Ants. Uh, Japan and Adam and the Ants were also labeled as a new romantic artist by the press, although they, they were t said to have... Uh, said, no, we're not part of that, nor we have any direct connection to that scene. But hey, Adam Ant, Adam Ant, you look like you are. Look at the ruffled shirt. Come on, and the Napoleon, you know, uh, Napoleon jacket. A number of these bands adopted synthesizers and helped to develop the synth pop in the early 80s, which combined with the distinctive new romantic visuals helped them first to, uh, to national success in the UK, and then via MTV during the major rotation, play a major part in the second British invasion of the U.S. church. You know, the first, of course, was the Beatles and Rolling Stones in the 60s. And then by the end of 1981, the original movement had largely kind of died down. Although many of the artists associated with the scene continued their careers, some with enormous commercial success, like Boy George and others, they have largely abandoned the aesthetic of the movement. But I have a feeling it's coming back. I, I just have a feeling. All right. So when Boy George was part of this, you know, Blitz Kids, he actually, I didn't know this, occasionally sang with the song or the group Bow Wow Wow of I Want Candy. He actually at that time performed under the stage name Lieutenant Lush with the group. He was Boy George. And then after his tenure with the group ended, he decided I gotta make my own band. And that's when he found bassist Mike Craig, Mikey Craig, drummer John Moss, and then finally guitarist Roy Hay joined the group. And the funny thing, I think I've read many articles over that it was John Moss, the drummer that named the group, but it was it's a great name for of Culture Club because look, they have an Irish gay man as the lead singer, a black Briton on bass, a blonde Englishman on guitar and keyboards, and a Jewish drummer with John. So Culture Club became the name. The group the group recorded demos which were paid by EMI Records, but the label was unimpressed and decided not to sign the group. Then Virgin Records heard the demos and then signed them on in uh, the UK 
releasing the albums in Europe, while Epic Records released their albums in the United States and much of the rest of the world. Uh, too bad EMI Records. Uh, they could have made lots of money with them. Okay. Did you know about the rivalry with Boy George and Pete Burns of the band Dead or Alive? I knew about it, but I didn't realize what was going on behind the scenes and then how classy George, or, uh, Boy George was. So let me start. So the band's 1982 debut at the Top of the Pops, Pops Top of the Pops, uh, as well as they made a, a couple appearances with our version of Top of the Pops in America, which is American Bandstand with Dick Clark, ca you know, caught everyone's eye. Just like mine, like, is he a boy? Is he a girl? He was on headlines. It really focused on Boy George's androgynous or gender fluid style of dress and sexual amb ambiguity. And so magazines started to like, you know, put him on every magazine cover. Well, Pete Burns, you know him, on Dead or Alive, if you've not seen uh, Spin Me Around Like a Record Baby video, watch it. You're like, ah, get it. He was the lead singer of the new wave band Dead or Alive and would later claim he was the first to wear braids, big hats, and colorful costumes. But George, Boy George, with his you know very quick wit, said, it's not who did it first, it's who did it best. Well, feud throughout the years, but then the sad thing is years later, Burns did die in London following a sudden cardiac arrest back on uh, October 23rd, 16th. So he'll, he'll be hitting at six year mark at the age of 57, ooh, so young. And what happened was he was going through bankruptcy. He had a lot of cosmetic surgery, some I issues. People who paid tribute to him after his death included Boy George, who even said he was quote unquote, one of our great true eccentrics. And then Boy George even did him a solid. He even paid for the cost of Burns' funeral despite their rivalry through the years. So even more impressed with Boy George. Okay, so let's go back to the song. What is it about? So in an interview, Boy George had said, quote unquote, that the song is about the terrible fear of alienation that people have, the fear of standing up for one thing. It's about trying to suck up to everybody. Basically, if you aren't true, if you don't act like you feel, then you get karma justice. That's nature's way of paying you back. Interesting. In response to some claims from singer-songwriter Jimmy Jones that said the song plagiarized his hit Handyman, okay, I have to check that out, George stated, quote-unquote, I might have heard it once, but it certainly wasn't something I sat down and said, yeah, I want to copy this. And in an interview back with 60 Minutes Australia, Boy George said that he wrote the song while he was on vacation in Egypt and that the other mem members of Culture Club were initially hesitant to record it as they felt it sounded like a country song. It kind of does, but it works with some reggae thrown in there. And the strong harmonica part was actually played by Judd Lander, who was a member of a group, or they call it a Mercy Beat group, called The Hideaways in the 1960s. So great harmonica work there. The song was originally to be called Cameo Chameleon, but the band was recorded in interviews in mid-1983, stating, stating that it was to be the title of their next single. So they went with Karma Chameleon, which there you have it. Have you seen the music video? It's definitely, it's an interesting. It's kind of a way uh, ahead of its time because it starts with the title, Mississippi 1870. And then you see all these multiracial group of people dressed in 19th century garb. And as they have some in red, gold, and green to also reference the lyrics. But it's funny because I thought, I thought the moment I saw I'm like, is this a Shonda Rhimes Bridgerton episode? Because years later in the 2020s, Shonda, you know, has her peer piece with African-American individuals, not just white, and it reminded me of that. So again, Boy George, you're ahead of your time, or whoever this is. It looks like the music video was directed by Peter Sinclair, and it was filmed at Desborough Island in Weybridge during 1983. So Peter Sinclair, you're ahead of your time. Anyway, Boy George is dressed in what would be known as his signature look of his costume, or fingerless gloves, long braids, black bowler hat, and lots of color. And throughout this darn video, there's a pickpocketer, and he steals jewelry, he's kind of going through the crowd, and then they get on a riverboat called the Chameleon. As Boy George continues to sing, it's revealed that while this thief is playing poker, that he is, is you know, is not playing fair. And once they find out that, they realize all the stuff that's on him, he's stolen from the folks that are on the riverboat, of course, are all in his pockets and in his pants. So they make him literally walk the plank while the uh, ladies of the boat use their parasols to poke him through and he falls down in the river. And then as the video ends, everyone's partying with the name of, of course, the boat, which is called the Chameleon. So hilarious, ahead of its time. Watch it, it's on YouTube, many, many hits. I hope 
this uh, trip down memory lane was good. It brought me back. I was a mere 11 or 12 at this time. And like I said, we would dance to Karma Chameleon and all the songs at my seventh, eighth grade dance. I can remember it like it was yesterday and this, the wafting of, of Dakar Noir in the distance. Thanks again to our listener, Glenda in the UK for this shout out. And I'm glad we were able to do this. If you have any suggestions like what Glenda has, send us an email, send us something on our media site as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we might do the episode and give you a shout out too. Till then, keep singing those songs wrong. Bye.